the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, I would like to welcome you to the second day of our Thanksgiving and Praise Conference. John chapter 6 verse 63 says that the Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 would also say that by faith we understand that God created the world through his word. This means that what can be seen was made by things that were invisible. My dear friends, everyone, each and every one of us is on a spiritual path. Most people don't just know it. Everyone is on a spiritual path. There comes a time in the evolution of every soul when the chief concern is no longer the survival of the physical body but the growth of the spirit. Let me ask you a question. Can you tell the difference between the living and the dead? It sounds like a funny question, right? But I'm asking you a question. Can you tell the difference between the living and the dead? The difference between the living and the dead is the spiritual. The dead body has all the parts that make up the form of a living person. What it is missing is the formless spiritual energy that gives it life. That is why Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 will say that by faith we understand that God created the world through his word. This means that the things that we see were made from things that we do not see. The things that we do not see, that is spiritual energy. That formless spiritual energy that we call life. So just like a car is powered by fuel energy, everything here in these physical dimensions are powered by the spiritual. My dear friends, life is essentially spiritual. And if you understand this singular key, you will triumph every time. Look, with our spiritual energy, we would not be participants in the movement of life. Whether we like it or not, we are always using spiritual energy. And because we are using that spiritual energy to create our own personal journey, we can change, we can evolve, we can transcend, we can adapt, or we can descend into a trap of our own making. Look, the point is this. We have the gift of life and we have the free will to use it however we choose to use it. However, there are consequences. You know, people seem to back away from discussing the spiritual because they confuse the idea of spirituality with a belief system. Belief, doctrines. Anyway, let me not even go there. Suffice to say for now that we are spiritual beings. Every one of us, spirituality first. That should be the focus. My dear friends, listen when I tell you that the explanation for everything that appears in our lives has its foundation in the spiritual. And when we begin to concentrate on being alive to God more than being alive to ourselves, then the Spirit of God leads us and there is a beautiful consequence. When we concentrate on being alive to God more than being alive to ourselves, then we begin to grasp the idea that God created life to be enjoyed and we begin to notice how he is always touching lives, whether they belong to him or not. When we concentrate on being alive to God more than being alive to ourselves, we suddenly notice the footprint of God's kingdom in all sorts of odd places, and we begin to smell the fragrance of his presence in both the most common and the uncommon of situations. My dear friends, because the spiritual is the foundation for the physical, That is why we spend time here teaching and discussing the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Look, as Christians, it's unfortunate, but we have this only one approach towards prayers. You know, just like the way your cabinet key cannot open your front door, or just like the way your car key cannot open your bedroom door, even though they are all keys, prayer is a key. That's very true. But different situations require the use of different types of prayers to unlock those situations. Prayer simply means the ability to communicate to God, to be heard by God, and to hear God as well. 
but we have different keys that we use. That is why in this last conference of the year, I'll be introducing you to one of the most powerful keys, one of the most powerful mysteries that you can use to unlock issues in the spiritual realms and in the physical dimension. We are talking about the mystery of thanksgiving, the mystery of praise and dance. This mystery is actually a master key. It can unlock different kinds of spiritual locks. So like we always do for every topic under discussion, let's zoom into scripture and see what God says about this topic under discussion. My dear friends, when you go into the Bible, several Greek and Hebrew words are translated thanks and thanksgiving in the Bible. But here are the big two. When you go to the Hebrew, we have the Yeda. This is the main word for thanks in the Old Testament. So the concept of thanks comes up 102 times in the Old Testament. And this word is used 72 of those times. And here's the definition in the Hebrew rendition. Acknowledging what is right about God in praise and thanksgiving. Yada. Acknowledging what is right about God in praise and thanksgiving. When you come to the Greek, we have the Eucharistio. Thankfulness comes up about 71 times in the New Testament. Basically, the word is used to mean to show oneself graceful, to be thankful, to give thanks. My Catholic friends will recognize the word Eucharist in this definition. So this term comes from Jesus' giving thanks before eating his last supper with his apostles. Look, one thing I love about the Hebrew definition of thanks is this. Thanksgiving is totally tied to who God is. It is totally tied to who God is. So that the more we learn about God, the more we should praise and glorify him. So the psalmist repeatedly calls us to give thanks to the Lord for two things, his loving kindness and for his miracles among men. So this isn't just a polite thank you for when something good happens. It must be an everyday thing. This thank you must be a lifestyle. So what does praise and thanksgiving represent in scripture? Number one, praise is a garment. Praise is a garment. It should be like a dress that you put on. Just like the way you wear clothing every day. Praise must be a garment. Your praise defines your identity. Because when you go to heaven, it's all about praise and thanksgiving. So your praise defines your identity. Your praise defines your authority. To live without praise, therefore, is to live without identity and authority. So what's your identity? Your identity is a child of God. And we can use your garment to define who you are. And once we know your identity, then we are defining your authority. So praise is a garment. Immediately you see a policeman wearing a uniform. You know that that is a what? A policeman. So praise is a garment that you put on. And your praise defines your identity. And your praise defines your authority. So to live without praise is to live without identity and authority. So those of you who live without praise, you are praiseless. You are always grumbling and complaining. It means that you are living without identity and you don't have authority. And once you you have lost your identity and you have lost your authority, the devil will use you for kukufu football. To be praiseless is to be naked in the spirit. So if you are someone who who doesn't like to praise God, you, you don't give thanks to God, you, you don't dance your way into the spirit as far as the things of God are concerned, then you are naked in the spirit. And when you are naked in the spirit, you are open to attacks. Your praise also defines your dignity. Your praise determines your opportunities. So some of you are looking for opportunities, but your praise is what determines your opportunities. Your praise is also a weapon of war. I'm just giving you headlines. We'll be delving into these issues very soon. Your praise can make the difference between winning and losing in life. Praise equips you to be equal to the agencies and the emergencies of life. And praise is a sacrifice. And once it's a sacrifice, the Lord looks upon your sacrifice and it comes to you. It comes true for you. So you cannot be vibrant in praise and be lacking in fire because sacrifice provokes fire. And praise is a sacrifice that establishes you in a covenant with God. So your praise activates covenant. And when you walk in covenant, you walk under covering. So praise moves you from claiming promises to walking in the covenant. Like I said, all these ones are headlines. Very soon, we'll be delving into them one after the other. 
so my dear friends if you have not heard anything today the point i'm making is this simple i started from the backdrop that life is essentially spiritual and we are all on a spiritual journey and what makes up for living is a spiritual energy without a spiritual energy the physical dimension is useless so life is essentially spiritual so i i went on to say that we need to grasp the idea that if we want to survive in these dimensions then we need to understand that spirituality comes first and as part of spirituality we have been teaching you powerful mysteries that you can use to unlock your issues and to grow spiritually and here we are the last month of the year we are coming to treat one of the powerful mysteries the mystery of thanksgiving and praise so i began to go into scripture and i said when you go into the hebrew we have the yada which means that acknowledging what is right about god in praise and thanksgiving we have the greek you can resteal which means that you you are thankful to god you show yourself grateful you give thanks and then i said that thanksgiving the concept of thanksgiving is totally tied to who god is so when we are talking about thanksgiving and praise it's supposed to be a garment and once it is a garment it defines your identity and once it defines your identity it gives you authority so to live without praise is to live without identity and authority and to be praiseless is to be naked in the spirit so your praise defines your dignity your praise determines your opportunities and praise is a weapon of war and your praise can make the difference between winning and losing in life and your praise also equips you to be equal to the agencies and the emergencies of life so would you rise up and begin to praise for our prayer intention today we are using psalm 118 verse 24 as the foundation and it reads this is the day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it so today we are thanking god for the gift of marriage for those of you who are married thank god for the gift of your marriage i know some of you are having challenges here and there but still go ahead and thank god for the gift of your marriage if you are single now if you are listening to me and you are single but you are trusting god for the gift of marriage thank god for your future spouse thank god for your future children thank god for a good marriage given to you in advance so today our focus is the gift of marriage we are thanking god for the gift of marriage and if you are single and you hope to get married thank god for your future spouse thank god for your future children thank god for a good marriage given to you in advance remember just give thanks no asking just give thanks no asking so let us pray our father in heaven creator of all and source of all goodness and love we ask you to please look kindly upon us and receive our heartfelt gratitude in this time of giving thanks we thank you for all the graces and blessings that you have bestowed upon us we thank you for the spiritual and temporal we thank you for our faith and religious heritage we thank you for provision of food and shelter. We thank you for our health. We thank you for the love that we have for one another. We thank you for our family and friends. Dear Father, in your infinite generosity, we thank you for the continued graces and the blessings that you have already granted us in the coming year. This and many more we ask in the name of Jesus, your son and our brother. Amen. My dear friends, let no one deceive you. Life is essentially spiritual and that is the basis for which we should approach everything in this dimension remember no asking only thanking have a prayerful day shalom and god bless you